Today, Kushbu and I are going to read the 15th discourse of the Bhagavad Gita. These are the versions I'm reading from. The first is the Bhagavad Gita, translated by Lori Patton. Uh, she's the president of Middlebury College, and this is the Penguin Classic. The second one is uh, the Light Illuminations Bhagavad Gita, translated by Sri Purohit Swami and annotated by Kendra Crossan Barrows. And I'll be reading uh, Miss Barrows' annotations. And I call that the prose version. And then the third version I'm reading from is the Bhagavad Gita, translated by R.K. Sharma with Carol Pitts and Les Morgan. Slok one. Shri Shri Bhagavanu Vacha Udva Mula Madhaha Sakhamak Shravat Tathaha Prahuravya Yama Chandasi Paranani Yastya Vedasa Veda Vita Slok 1 The prose version calls this discourse the Lord God. The Blessed One said, They say the Ashvata tree is imperishable, its roots high, its branches below. The meters are its leaves, and one who knows this is wise in the Veda. The prose reads, Lord Sri Krishna continued, This phenomenal creation, which is both ephemeral and eternal, is like a tree but having its seed above in the highest and its ramifications on this earth below. The scriptures are its leaves, and he who understands this knows. And there's a footnote. The image here is of a giant inverted tree with its roots in the air and its branches below. This symbolic tree, referred to in the scriptures as the Ashvata, is traditionally associated with the sacred fig tree, Ficus religiosa, known in India as the Pipal. It is sacred to Buddhists as the Bodhi tree, under which the Buddha attained enlightenment. Some commentators equate the Ashvata with the banyan, Ficus bengalensis, because like the fig, it has branches which reach down to root in the earth. As a symbol of cosmic manifestation or worldly existence, samsara, the Ashvata is comparable to the tree of life. It is also an image of the human nervous system. The leaves are the sensory organs receiving knowledge of the phenomenal world symbolized by scriptures or Vedas. And the, and the Sharma reads, the Blessed Lord said, They describe an, an imperishable Ashvata tree as having roots above, branches below. The Vedic mantras are its leaves. One who knows that knows the Vedas. Slope 2. Adhashrodhava Prasut. Prasutastasya Sakha Gruna Pravrudya Vishaya Pravalaha Adashrava Mulanya Nusantatani Karmanu Bandhi Ni Manusha Loke Slok 2 Its branches spread wide below and above, grow large through the gunas. It sprouts the objects of sense. Its roots are stretched below, growing action in the human realm. That was the pattern. The prose reads, Its branches shoot upward and downward, deriving their nourishment from the qualities. Its buds are the objects of sense, and its roots, which follow the law causing man's regeneration and degeneration, pierce downward into the soul. 
the Sharma reads, the branches of that tree spread above and below with the objects of the senses as budding leaves, nourished by the gunas, and roots spread out below, producing action in the world of human beings. Slope three. Oh, I'm sorry, slope three and slope four are together. Asahada sastreda dadhena chintava tataha padaha tatpari ma nigatyava yaha yasminangata na nivatanitya bhuyaha tameva chadha purushaha prapadhe yata Pravrutihi Prasuta Purani. Slope three and four. The pattern reads The form of the Ashvata is not to be discerned here, neither its end nor beginning, nor ongoing life. When it's fully grown, roots are cut by the strong acts of non clinging. Then that place must be sought where once they have gone, they will not turn back again. And they think, I take refuge in the first spirit where activity flowed forth in ancient times. Prose reads, in this world, its true form is not known, neither its origin nor its end, and its strength is not understood until the tree with its roots striking deep into the earth is hewn down by the sharp acts of non-attachment. Beyond lies, beyond lies the path from which, when found, there is no return. This is the primal God from whence this ancient creation has sprung. Sharma reads, The form of this tree is not perceived here in this world, neither its end, its beginning, nor its foundation. Having cut this well-rooted Ashvata tree with the sharp weapon of detachment, then that goal should be sought, reaching which the wise do not return. I seek refuge in the same primordial person from whom the ancient creative impulse emanated. Slope five. Nirmana moha jitasa da dosha adhyatma nitya vinivrutta kama dande vimulataka sukha duhu kasang shera gachantya mudhaha gachantya mudha. Padama Vyaha Tata. Slope 5. Without pride or confusion, the wrongs of clinging vanquished, eternal in the highest self, desires turned away, freed from dualities of pleasure and pain. Those who are not confused go to that imperishable place. That was the pattern. The prose reads. The wise attain eternity when, free from pride and delusion, they have conquered their love for the things of sense. When renouncing desire and fixing their gaze on the self, they have ceased to be tossed to and fro by the opposing sensations, like pleasure and pain. And the Sharma reads, those undiluted persons who are free from vanity and delusion and have conquered the impurities of attachment, who are well grounded in spiritual wisdom, devoid of worldly desires and free from the dualities called joy and sorrow, they attain that imperishable state. Slok 6. No, tamadras. Tamatra Suryona Sashado Na Pavakaha 
The patent reads, Neither the sun nor the rabbit marked moon nor flame lights up that place. When they have gone to my highest dwelling place, they do not return. The prose reads, neither sun, moon, nor fire shine there. Those who go thither never come back, for, O oh, Arjuna, that is my celestial home. And there's a footnote, never come back. Quote, once a salt do doll went to measure the depth of the ocean. It wanted to tell others how deep the water was, but this is... This is could never do, for no sooner did it get into the water that it melted. Now, who was there to report the ocean's depth, according to Ramakrishna? And the Sharma reads, <clears throat> Neither sun nor the moon nor fire illumines that imperishable state. Having attained that supreme abode of mine, none return. Slok 7. Mame Vasho, Jeeva Loki, Jeeva Bhutaha, Sanatanaha, Manaha, Pradyani, Nindayani, Prakruti Thani, Seven. Just a fragment of me in the realm of the living is the eternal. Individual life, it draws to itself the senses dwelling in material nature. And the sixth sense is the mind. That was the patent. The prose reads... It is only a very small part of my eternal self, which is the life of this universe, drawing round itself the six senses, the mind, the last, which have their source in nature. And there's a footnote. This verse states that the individual living soul, jiva, is an integral part of the eternal self. But how can the individual soul be a fragment of the eternal self yet also be considered identical with the one self. Shankara likens the individual soul to the sun reflected in water. The reflected sun is but a portion of the real sun, and on the removal of water, the reflected sun returns to the original sun and remains as that very sun. Thus, according to Shankara's teaching of non-dualism, the portioning into an individual souls is imaginary since the one God cannot be divided in, in reality. Since the one God cannot be divided in reality. And the Sharma reads, part of myself truly is the eternal individual soul in this world. This part of myself draws the senses to itself with the mind as the sixth located in nature. Slok 8. Sharira yadava proti yacha pyu kyataka matishwaraha gruhitvetani sayani Vayurgandha Nivashayata Slok 8 when the, when the Lord gains a body, and when it leaves it, he goes and takes up the senses, just as the wind takes fragrances from the place where they began. That was the patent. Prose reads, when the Supreme Lord enters a body and leaves it, he gathers these senses together and travels on with them, 
as the wind gathers perfume while passing through the flowers. The Sharma reads, when the Lord adopts a body or abandons it, it, he takes these senses and mind along as he goes, much as the wind carries fragrance from a source such as flowers, herbs, etc. Slope 9. Shotaha chakshuhu svartashyanaha cha rasnana dhyava meva cha adishthaya manaha shravaya vishaya nupase vate. Slope 9. This Lord rules taste and smell, hearing, sight, and touch, as well as the mind. He enjoys the objects of the senses. That was the pattern. The prose reads, He is the perception of the ear, the eye, the touch, the taste, and the smell, yea, and of the mind also. And the enjoyment of the things which they perceive is also his. The Sharma reads, presiding over hearing, sight, touch, taste, and smell, as well as the mind, he enjoys the objects of the senses. Slope 10. Utkama antaha sthiti vapi murjana va gunan gunani vattama vimudha nanu pashyanti Pashyanti Jnana Chakshusha Slok 10 The pattern reads, The confused do not perceive the Lord as he leaves or stays or partakes in the midst of the gunas, but the ones with eyes of wisdom see him. The prose reads, the ignorant do not see that it is he who is present in life and who departs at death, and even that it is he who enjoys pleasure through the qualities only the eye of wisdom sees. The Sharma reads, Those who are deluded do not perceive him whether he is leaving or staying or even enjoying objects in association with the gunas, those endowed with the eye of knowledge do perceive. Slope 11, or I'm sorry, there's a footnote here. The indwelling self transcends the gunas even when apparently connected with the functions of the gunas. Slope 11. Yan Yatanto yogi yogi ne shrena pashyan tiyatmanya vasthitama yatanto dapya krutatmano neva pashyan tiyachetasaha. Slok 11. The pattern reads. In their effort, the practitioners of yoga see this one abiding in the self, but even with effort, those thoughtless ones whose selves are not prepared do not see him. The prose reads, the saints with great effort find him within themselves, but not the unintelligent, who in spite of every effort cannot control their minds. And there's a footnote. The un unintelligent achetasa, others possible other possible translations giving different shades of meaning include thoughtless, ignorant, unperfected, and unthinking. And the Sharma reads with effort. The yogins see him established in the self, but even with effort, the unthinking ones, having no self-awareness, do not see him. Slope 12. 
यदा दिस्यगत तेजो जगम्य सेदम यचिन्मती यचागंतो तेजो विधि मामकम श्लोक ट्वेल्व The pattern reads: the brilliance which comes from the sun lights up the world with no break. It is in the moon and in fire. Recognize that brilliance is mine. The prose reads: remember that the light which proceeding proceeding from the sun illumines the whole world, and the light which is in the moon and that which is in the fire also. All are born of me, and the Sharma reads, "The light within the sun, which illumines the entire world, and that which is in the moon, and that which is in the fire, know that light is mine." Slok thirteen. Kama vishya cha bhutani dhara yami yamah mojasa. सर्वो the pattern reads when i enter the earth on which all creatures work walk i preserve all beings with energy when i become soma liquid in nature I cause the plants to flower. The prose reads: I enter this world and animate all my creatures with my vitality, and by my cool moonbeams I nourish the plants. And there's a footnote: By my cool moonbeams, Edgerton's literal translation reads: "Quote, becoming the juicy som- soma." I make all plants to grow. Soma, literally juice, is identified with the moon, which rules water and other fluids. The inner meaning of this passage is suggested by Yogananda. Quote, Manifesting through the elemental natures, through the elemental principles of nature or prakriti, the watery moon, all forms, plants, offshoots. Come into being as differentiated rays of the one created light, creative light of God. And the Sharma reads: After entering the earth, I sustain all beings with my power, and taking the form of the moon. Endowed with moisture, I nourish all plants. Slope fourteen. Aha, Vishwa naro, Bhutva, Prani naha, Deha maashri saha, Prana, Pana samayukta ha, Paschamya anta, Chatur vighna ma. Slope fourteen. The pattern reads: When I become that fire which belongs to all people and enter the body of all who breathe, I have joined the in breath with the out breath, and I cook four kinds of food. The prose reads. Becoming the fire of life, I pass into their bodies, and uniting with the vital streams of prana and apana, I digest the various kinds of food. And the Sharma reads: Becoming the fire of life, dwelling in the body of all living beings, in union with prana and apana. I digest the four types of food, and there's a footnote: prana, elan vital, and apana. The eliminative wind are two types of vital energy in the body. They are also mentioned in verses four twenty nine 
and 527. The four types of food are bojja, edible, peya, drinkable, leya, lickable, and kosha, chewable. Slope 15. Sarvatva, chaha, hadi, sani rishto, mataha, smriti, gyanama, poha, nityava, vedishrava, sarve raha meva, vedyo, vedanta, vedanta, krudeda, videva, chahama. Slope 15. The pattern reads, I am seated in the heart of all. Memory, wisdom, and reason come from me. I am especially to be known through the Vedas, as I am a knower of Veda and the creator of Vedanta. The prose reads, I am enthroned in the hearts of all. Memory, wisdom, and discrimination owe their origin to me. I am he who is to be realized in the scriptures. I inspire their wisdom and know their truth. The Sharma reads, and I am located in the heart of all. From me emanate memory, knowledge, and their loss. I alone form the central knowable theme of all the Vedas. I alone am also the author of Vedanta and the knower of the Vedas. Just a moment. Okay. Slok 16. Da pravimo purusho loke kshara 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 eva cha kshara Sarvani Bhutani Kutasthodakshara Uchate Slok 16 The pattern reads, In the world there are two spirits. One can be destroyed, and the other can never be destroyed. All beings can be destroyed, but the one who stands above all is called the indestructible. The prose reads, there are two aspects in nature, the perishable and the imperishable. All life in this world belongs to the former. The unchanging element belongs to the latter. The Sharma reads, there are two types of persons, purushas, in the world, perishable and imperishable. All beings are perishable. The unchangeable consciousness is said to be imperishable. And there's a footnote. See verses 7, 4 to 5. Apara Prakriti, Apara Prakriti is said to have eight divisions. Earth, water, fire, air, space, mind, intellect, and ego. This is kshara, perishable, purusha, mutable consciousness. Para prakriti is the imperishable purusha, immutable consciousness. Slok 17. Uttama purusha svatya vanyaha paramatme tayu dhahata taha. Yo loka treya ma vishya vibhatya vyavya ishwaraha. Slok 17. The pattern reads, but the highest spirit is other than this. It is called the highest self, and when it enters the three worlds, it holds them up as the imperishable Lord. The prose reads, but higher than all am I, the supreme God, the absolute self, the eternal Lord, who pervades the worlds and upholds them all. The 
the Sharma reads. On the other hand, the Supreme Person is different, called the Supreme Self. This is the imperishable Lord who, after permeating the three worlds, sustains them. Slok 18. Ato dasni loke devecha prati taha. Oh, oh, I made the same mistake again. Just, just let me read it again. Yep. Yasma taksharama titoha hamakshara dapi chotamaha uto dasni loke devecha. Pratitaha Purushottama, Sloka 18. The pattern reads, Since I go beyond that which is destroyed and am higher even than the indestructible, I am known as the highest self in the world and in the Veda. The prose reads, Beyond comparison of the eternal with the non-eternal am I. Who am, who am called by scriptures and sages the supreme personality, the highest God. And there's a footnote. The supreme personality, Paroshatama, Lord Krishna is the avatar, is the highest of the high. Or Lord Krishna as the avatar is the highest of the high. And the Sharma reads, because I transcend all perishable ones and am superior even to the imperishable, therefore, in the world as well as in the Vedas, I am said to be the supreme person. Slope 19. Yo ma meva masam mamudho janati Purushottamama sa sarva vibhajjati ma sarva bhavi bharata. Slope 19. The pattern reads, Son of Bharata, the one who is not confused recognizes me as the highest spirit, recognizing all that one is devoted to me with fullness of being. The prose reads, He who with unclouded vision sees me as the Lord God, knows all there is to be known, and always shall worship me with this whole, with his whole heart, and always shall worship me with his whole heart. And there's a footnote, Janana Deva comments, quote, A person who worships me isn't different from me. Just as waves aren't different from the sea, Krishna seems to suggest that true, wholehearted worship arises when the worshiper realizes his or her oneness with God, the object of worship. The Sharma reads, One who thus... One who, thus undiluted, realizes me as the supreme person, he, omniscient, is devoted to me in all respects, O descendant of Bharata. Slope 20. Iti guhattama sastra nida the patent reads, Blameless one, son of Bharata, this most secret rule is told by me, and when one has awakened, one would be filled with insight and finished with one's task. The prose reads, 
Thus, O sinless one, I have revealed to you this most mystic knowledge. He who understands gains wisdom and attains the consummation of life. The Sharma reads, This most secret doctrine has been stated by me, O sinless one. After realizing this, one becomes wise and has fulfilled one's duty of a descendant of Bharata. And there's a Kalafan. The Kalafan reads, here ends the 15th chapter named the Yoga of the Supreme Purusha in the Upanishad sung by Lord Sri Krishna in the dialogue between Sri Krishna and Arjuna in the scripture of yoga pertaining to knowledge about Brahman. That is the end of Discourse 15. Thank you very much, Krishpu. Um, I will Thank you very much. see you again soon. See you Wednesday. Um, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Peace. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.